Welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk about scleroderma here. And scleroderma doesn't come up too much on your exam. Uh, and when it does, it comes up as a fairly straightforward diagnosis question because the treatment is extremely complex and we don't even have specific treatment for uh, scleroderma. So um, what that means is that you really need to have a general idea of what this is. Unfortunately, the nomenclature gets really confusing. So we're going to try and sort that out um, as well as go over sort of a general idea of how we work this up. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and you'll get notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, so scleroderma, that is actually a symptom. It's thickening of the skin. However, we use that name to refer to multiple clinical entities, and we need to tease those out now. So scleroderma can be generalized or systemic, or it can be localized. So the localized scleroderma, we're not going to talk about here, but it's exactly what it sounds like. Little areas of your skin, maybe just one area, uh, that is scleroderma, and the rest of your body is fine, you don't have any other symptoms. That's called morphia. Um, some people think it's like a rash, but it is technically scleroderma. Now, the ones that we usually think of when we think of scleroderma are the systemic scleroses. Okay, that's usually what we're, what we're thinking of when we talk about scleroderma, right? Now, there's limited and diffuse, and they share a few things in common, and then we'll go into what's different. So, number one, fibrosis of the skin and or internal organs. Number two, presence of certain autoantibodies, which we'll cover. And then vasculopathy. Is this the same as vasculitis? Mm, no, it is not. Vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessels. This is uh, fibrosis of the blood vessels. All right, so um, both will involve those crest features. And by the way, sy uh, limited systemic sclerosis um, used to be called crest syndrome. It's basically the same thing for our purposes. Now with diffuse systemic sclerosis, it can involve internal organs, particularly the kidney, heart, and lungs. So at the kidneys, you can get renal insufficiency and something called scleroderma renal crisis, which we'll go into. With the heart, you can get congestive heart failure. I'd also add arrhythmias too. So if you have a patient with a new diagnosis, get an EKG. And then the lungs can cause pulmonary fibrosis and interstitial lung disease. So think of diffuse systemic sclerosis as limited or crest syndrome plus multiple internal organ involvement. This tends to happen in women and it usually comes on in the 30s and 40s. All right, so the autoantibodies, there's two really important ones, then one a little less important. Uh, number one, anti-SCL70. This is more associated with diffuse systemic sclerosis, whereas anti-centromere is more associated with limited systemic sclerosis. And then there's this anti-RNA polymerase, which is rare even among these patients, but if they have it, um, number one, it is extremely specific. Number two, it portends a higher risk of scleroderma renal crisis. All right, so this is what we're going to talk about. Limited systemic sclerosis is characterized by this crest constellation. Calcinosis, Raynaud's esophageal involvement, which may be GERD, or it could be um, dysphagia. And then scleroderma and telangiectasia. Uh, Raynaud's phenomenon is probably the most common presenting complaint. Usually it's triggered by cold. You should have an idea of what Raynaud's phenomenon is. It is vasospasm. Uh, the diagnosis here is clinical. There are um, guidelines and criteria, but you don't need to memorize them. Just have an idea of the crest symptoms. Now, after you suspect somebody has uh, systemic sclerosis, what you want to then do is get the anti-SCL70, get the anti-centromere. You can even get anti um uh, RNA polymerase. I'm running out of room here. 
Um, you can even throw in ANA as a sort of a general, um, because some of these patients won't have any of them, but they can still have systemic sclerosis. And you might even add in a rheumatoid factor. And then if you're suspecting uh, any kind of systemic sclerosis, you want to get a BMP to check for renal function. So that would be probably a good start for your orders. All right, this is the criteria. Don't memorize this, but it's always good to know what they're looking for. Okay, clinical findings. So this is just a cartoon. You can print this out if you want. All right, now face. Uh, so the big thing you're going to notice with the face is a loss of wrinkles. Now, I'm not talking about the aging wrinkles, although it does affect that too. I'm talking about your general facial expression lines. So for instance, the nasolabial folds, the 11 lines, the crow's feet, all that's going to be lost. Now, I can already hear some of you saying, oh, that doesn't sound too bad. I don't have to get my Botox. Uh, yeah, well, when you can't make a, when you can't smile, you have a hard time opening your mouth, you have a hard time chewing, uh, not very fun. So if you see here, um, you notice that she's got microstomia and uh, also microchilia, which is small lips. Um, so this is a consequence of the fibrosis. And this is going to cause a big problem because it's really hard to brush your teeth if you can't open your mouth, right? Calcinosis cutis, um, these really hard rocky nodules that you tend to get on your extensor surfaces. Now, what does this look like or sound like? Rheumatoid nodules. What's the difference? Rheumatoid nodules are rubbery, but calcinosis cutis is rocky. Okay? They look the same when you look at them, but when you feel them, you can definitely tell the difference. And even if, if you were to do an x-ray, you'd even be able to see them. Look at this. I just thought this was really cool. Probably not cool to have it though, right? Okay, Raynaud's phenomenon, vasospasm. You should know what it looks like. Get this blanching of the fingers. Usually it is the fingers. Um, and if it's severe enough, you can get cyanosis. Um, so again, you see a little less dramatic here. Um, often it only occurs in one hand, so you can just compare the two. But this is a pretty easy thing to diagnose. And it's not specific to crest, but it is uh, commonly seen. Sclerodactyly. So what I look for personally is I look for a loss of those folds on the DIP or the PIP joints. So right here, you would expect to see those folds. You can kind of see them here, um, but uh, maybe a little distal. You can't see it. Can't see them. If you look at your hands, you can see those nice little wrinkles. Okay, that's uh, that's loose skin, and it's loose because when you make a fist, you want to have extra skin. Otherwise, you'd be tearing your skin every time, right? Uh, so, um, what happens is you have deposition and thickening and then you lose that. And look at this. Remember I said make a fist? He didn't have enough skin and caused a, an ulceration. So here's, again, you can see that lack of wrinkling. Tal Talangiectasias, um, again, nonspecific, but you should know what they look like. Just little clumps of vessels under the skin. What will you not see in limited systemic sclerosis? So remember, I said limited is distal to the knee, distal to the elbow, and the face. Pro if, if you have scleroderma anywhere more proximal than that, shoulders, chest, trunk, then you're dealing with a diffuse systemic sclerosis. So you can see it here. It's on the shoulders, it's on the trunk. Uh, in patients of color, um, in particular, um, you can notice depigmentation. Now, you can get depigmentation in anyone, of course, but you're not going to notice it in someone like me who's white as a ghost, right? Uh, but you will notice it in somebody who has darker skin. So they call this a salt and pepper-like appearance. And sometimes uh, skin that's sclerotic, they may describe it as shiny too. So we already kind of went over diffuse systemic sclerosis. It looks like limited, but then you got all these other symptoms like more uh, scleroderma and you can get um, renal involvement, lung involvement. Um, so uh, these other nonspecific symptoms correspond to that. Palpitations, maybe an arrhythmia in the heart, shortness of breath, um, could be a uh, uh, interstitial lung disease and then fatigue and weakness. Uh, again, we work this up the same way, get those titers, and the treatment is symptomatic. The big thing we want to do is prevent scleroderma renal crisis or treat it. Um, that looks a lot like a malignant hypertension. Um, so if you have what looks like a malignant hypertension in somebody who fits the mold of a systemic sclerosis, then you're likely de dealing with 
uh, scleroderma renal crisis. We manage that different. We give ACE inhibitors, okay? So the treatment is really symptomatic. Uh, there's nothing we can do to slow this down. There's nothing we can do to stop it. Uh, and immunosuppressants don't even work that well, uh, with the exception of a few things. So for the skin thickening, we go with moisturizers. Um, in severe cases, you can give cyclophosphamide or D-penicillamine. Cyclophosphamide probably probably be more effective, but it comes with a lot of side effects. Raynaud's, at Raynaud's attacks, we go with calcium channel blockers, just like with any other uh, vasospastic uh, issue. So uh, go with calcium channel blockers there. Uh, reflux, treat as usual, omeprazole, proton pump inhibitors, um, scleroderma, uh, or scleroderma renal crisis rather, ACE inhibitors, we talked about that, interstitial lung disease. Here, we will go with cyclophosphamide, okay? We will go with cyclophosphamide here. It's the only thing that will slow that down. And pulmonary hypertension, we'll go with the endothelial and receptor antagonists like Bocentan or the PDE5 inhibitors like sildenafil. Recognize that? It's Viagra. It was originally made for pulmonary hypertension though. All right, so to recap, systemic sclerosis, both diffuse and limited, have three things in common, fibrosis, the presence of autoantibodies, and vasculopathy. Limited is the crest symptoms, um, and it's always the scleroderma is always going to be distal to the elbow, distal to the knee, and the face. Whereas diffuse can be anywhere, can involve the trunk. It can also involve internal organs like the lung, heart, and kidneys. Major complications: scleroderma, renal crisis, interstitial lung disease, arrhythmias, and congestive heart failure. Diagnosis is clinical, but remember to get those labs and remember what they correspond to: SCL70 diffuse, centromere limited. Treatment is symptomatic, but the common ones that are tested are calcium channel blockers for Raynaud, ACE inhibitors for scleroderma renal crisis, and then uh, for pulmonary hypertension, you can go with PD-5 uh, inhibitors such as Viagra or endothelin receptor antagonists like Bocentan.